It's Fish at 6, and it's Like Live. Welcome to the program. I'm Mike Fisher, your trusty and trusted reporter. This is the Fishbowl. That is the star. 40 years covering the NFL, 34 years on your Dallas Cowboys. And I welcome you into the program tonight. Uh, this is a prize winning week. So we gave away the Ed Tutal Jones autographed jersey uh, uh, not too long ago, a couple days ago. And more to come as we uh, turn the corner here in uh, approaching the middle of the week and approaching the NFL draft too. Top 10 takes from Frisco, Cowboys and more. Uh, and I read all your comments, even the crappy ones. So get in, get on, be good, whether we're live or like live, it all works. Top 10 takes. These are not, by the way, a uh, hot takes. These are fact-based opinions. <laughs> Item. Uh, so on Cowboys, uh, CowboysCountry.com, Cowboys space SI is how you can find it right now. A, a speculative idea. You're moving off of deck. God darn it, it didn't work. Let's move off deck. And let's do something else. And so the idea is being floated out there. I think this is a... a kind of a national media concept. Let's go do Derek Carr. Hey! Could that be a plug-in solution? And I do think that's the kind of player who, if you decided to turn the page on Dak Prescott, that there's, there's some um, not top 10 quarterback out there. You know, I, I use the example, like Gardner Minshew. There's guys like that. That could float you along. Could Derek Carr float you along? Could a good team win with him? Problems. Um, I, I don't know if the Raiders were a good team, but they they basically threw him out of town. Um, of course, landed with the Saints. Um, he was a premium pick, so there's some blue chipness to him, of course. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> and this is the problem you're going to run into with anybody who's ever done anything, unless they're 22 years old at, as an NFL quarterback. His cap hit next year is $51 million. So, and I'm not trying to, this, this is not a uh, excuse for what the Cowboys have done with Dak's contract. If you followed this program, you recognize the original plan with Dak Prescott's contract was fine till the Cowboys decided it wasn't. Derek Carr's cap hit next year is $51 million. It's Dakish. So let's go back to the drawing board. You want to find a uh, stopgap bridge kind of guy? It's been done. You know who did it uh, successfully? Seattle with Geno Smith. I think he might have re up this year. I think he... I mean, damn sure doesn't make $51 million. I think he might make 17 I don't have it in front of me. There's ways to do it. But I'm going to stay on the Cowboys' butts here. Their original plan was fine. It was fine. 12 and 5, 12 and 5, and 12 and 5 is a foundation of a fine plan. And then they changed their plan and changed it again. And now they're in limbo. Now they are straddling the fence. And sometimes when you straddle the fence, especially when it's rainy in Frisco like it is, you slip off the fence and you fall down on the fence and hit your gore tots. <laughs> Item two. One thing the Cowboys have done pretty well is first round manipulation. Move around a little bit. Pick up the extra, the extra pick. And... When you look at the first round offensive linemen, and we've discussed the four or so, and I'm not talking about first round grades now, I'm talking about guys that will be taken in the first round, and I'm sure you know there's a difference. Because you're uh, one of 70,000 fish heads in Cowboy Nation, the smartest Cowboy fans in all the land. Can you get the fifth best guy in a offensive line heavy draft by moving back and picking up an extra pick. Why is it critical to pick up an extra pick? If possible, and again, you got to use the 
Mike McCoy, not the Jimmy Johnson, the Mike McCoy trade chart or some version of it to make sure you're getting equal value or even winning the trade. Can you move back, get an extra pick, and help yourself in two ways? One, and we'll use the offensive lineman Kingsley Suamatia as an example. Is he the fifth guy? Is he still have a first round, again, not necessarily first round grade, but is he a first round quality player? And can, can you plug him in? Can he play right now? One thing they need in this draft, that guy's got to, that first round pick's got to play right now. Or the Cowboys slide even deeper into the depths, which we're going to get to in a minute. But the second thing about this concept, they need bodies. They got 10 guys walking out the door. They're not going to draft 10 rotational players. That's not the way the draft works, first of all. Okay, it did once with the Cowboys, kind of. And second of all, they don't have enough picks. They don't have 10 picks. Boy, what if they could get an extra pick? An extra dart. So let's put that in our back pocket and stash that away as a rainy day thought. <clears throat> Item three, what if they made a movie about the 1990 Dallas Cowboys, the Super Bowl Cowboys, which old sports writer, I'm talking about Hollywood now, which old sports writer might they call as a consultant on a movie about the Jimmy, Jerry, Switzer, Aikman, Emmett, Irvin, Haley, Dion, Woodson, Hmm, that's a beard scratcher. <laughs> Item four, slip sliding away. Before free agency commenced, go back to the middle of March, the Cowboys have the seventh, they had the seventh best odds in the NFL to win the Super Bowl. They were considered a top seven Super Bowl contender. And then the all-in roof caved in. They were favored to win the division, and they were the number seven team in the entire league. Now, we are a month later. They've gone from the odds of 16, uh, plus 1,600, plus 1,800. They've dropped to ninth place. They've been surpassed by the Eagles, which pains you. They've been surpassed by the Texans, which if you're an old Texan, I bet you that pains you too. And you know what I think about the Eagles. We talk about them quite a bit. That's a, that, that's a team that had a dysfunctional year, but a extremely sound roster with a general manager. You know, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't always hit home runs, but he always tries to. And then those two, those two things, the great roster and the go for it general manager are like two big powerful trees. And then hanging in the middle is the hammock uh, where their goofball coach and his uh, security guard, uh, they lay on the hammock in between. The two big trees holds up the goofballs in the middle. And we talk about the Texans quite a bit here because they represent the best lucky way to turn around. C.J. Stroud. If the Cowboys could move on from Dak Prescott and just go diddly diddly dink with their little bewitched nose or my large bewitched nose and go get C.J. Stroud, none of this would be a headache. How easy it would be. If ifs and nuts. No, if ifs and buts were candies and nuts. What a wonderful 4th of July it would be. Five. No, the Cowboys aren't tanking. But I'm now at the point where I'm willing to concede that when you watch what they do, certainly if you're a casual, when a casual watches what the Cowboys are doing, I'm not even going to argue with the casual anymore. I get it. You're watching what the Cowboys are doing. I don't know, man. It looks like tanking to me. And and it, it doesn't exactly because... That's not how it works. 
and you can't and you shouldn't and you wouldn't, but I mean, it is quacking like a duck. I got to give them that. I got to give the casuals that. The cowboys are quacking like a duck. Tanking, quacking like a duck. Item six, you're looking for every little advantage you can get against a, a NFC up and coming contender, Packers. Um, you could say they're nipping at the Cowboys' heels, or you could say they were nipping at the Cowboys' heels, then they circled around and bit them in the Gortats, those same Gortats that the Cowboys injured when they slipped off the fence on Dak Prescott. And then again, the Eagles. Cowboys versus Eagles in the NFC East, and the odds makers now say the Eagles have the edge. So if I'm the Cowboys, I'm looking for every little way. Here's a little way. It looks like Packers versus Eagles, season opener in Brazil. Now, first of all, that sounds like a lot of fun, too. If the Cowboys were playing in Rio de Janeiro, believe me, we'd be going. I mean, I don't mean you and me. I mean me and her. But it would also be good for the Cowboys if the Eagles go to Brazil and get all cluster bucked. Get all distracted and all screwed and it sets them back for a month and hey, it's possible. I, I, I'm, I'm reaching for straws, grasping for straws. I'm grasping for Brazilian straws. <laughs> but it's possible. Item seven, uh, we will spend a little time on this channel. Every once in a while, you know, I'm a Mavericks guy, as you know, going way back. Uh, as we sit here, Mavericks clinch a playoff spot tonight with a win. Uh, if the Suns or the Pelicans lose, the Mavericks play the Hornets, red hot Mavericks, playoff bound, surely, obviously, play the Hornets, Phoenix plays the Clippers, New Orleans plays the Blazers. So um, we'll keep you abreast of what's going on there. And there's a reason. I, hang on. You'll see. Hold on. Item eight, Derrick Henry, he's no dummy. He's talking uh, Baltimore media now and saying, no, 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 I didn't. I wasn't really that interested in the Cowboys. It was always going to be the Ravens for me. He's no dummy. There's no reason now to talk about how enthused he would have been. He's covered this. How enthused he would have been to play for the team that has its headquarters 18 minutes from his house. Trust me. He would have loved to sign that same contract if the Cowboys offer him the same contract as the Ravens offer him and don't fold into not really all-in mode. If the Cowboys were going for it and they offered him that contract to play here, he signs here. Believe that. But they didn't. They were never going to. And as we reported, they never even called him. And so Derrick Henry now very smartly saying, Baltimore was always my number one pick. My number one option. And there's some truth to it in the end because the Cowboys were not an option at all. Item nine, as long as we're doing the what if game, talking a little Mavericks here, we're talking about oh, old sports writer. What if I had the authority to drag into this space every once in a while. The greatest, one of a kind, old timey, up to datey, nobody like him, original, best, one of the best sports talk show hosts in the history of the art, uh, and certainly a legend locally. No, I'm not talking about myself. What if? Hmm. That's another beard scratcher. And item 10. So Mike is in the news and the contract and the controversy and the where thin and the who's it and the what's it. And guess who simply must speak out on this subject? No, not Micah. All I've seen that Micah's done on social media is put up a kind of a, a, a biblical, a Bible phrase about those who use weapons against him. And... Cowboys aren't saying anything public, publicly. They probably said enough. Micah's brother speaks out. And guess what Micah's brother Terrence is saying? You know what? I'm not going to tell you. 
I'm, I'm not going to contribute to the damage done by the bro bro mama drama. Deal? Deal. Fish out.